Are you new to Logic Pro X? Are you unsure you've been doing things correctly? I'm going to go through the top five common mistakes that I see in Logic Pro X users, how to fix them so you can start your journey on becoming a Logic Pro X savage. I'm just going to start with tempo. The default tempo for a lot of Logic Pro X sessions or um, templates is 100 or 120 BPM. So um, what happens is people will start their session at 120 and just start recording. And that's all well and good. And sometimes you don't people record songs that don't require a tempo or don't require a click track or a grid. Um, it's just like a free, free form. And that's totally fine. Um, and other times when you're using loops, um, you kind of want everything to be in some form of grid as well. So you can just quickly get ideas. You can copy parts over from one chorus to the next uh, and generally just stay in time. Here I brought in a loop that's 152 BPM. And I put the obviously the session at 152 as well. And it's kind of hard to see if just a quick glance at that whether it's all correct or not. Um, so I'd highly recommend it go to view and hit grid. And and now basically you can see that everything is four bars and it's perfectly in time. Uh, just say these are vocal files um, in a song that we've recorded. And then we want to change it to the actual, we brought in a new loop and it's 120 BPM. Uh, and all of a sudden all our vocal files would be a little bit different. There'll be all this stuff missing. Um, and if you basically times that by, you know, hundreds of files that are in a session, um, they're all going to be kind of scattered throughout and they won't make any sense. And it's really difficult to put them back in place. So I would recommend to use some sort of tap tempo feature. There's lots of apps. Um, we can just, you know, find out the tempo of your song or, the, your, or your idea. And then just basically go in here and put the tempo in that you want to go with. Um, bring the loop in. Uh, that's the corresponding tempo. And start recording. Um, and it'll save you a lot of headaches for later. The second thing is 24-bit recording. Uh, I've gone through this with other in earlier sort of tutorials. But... I'll show you how to quickly make sure that you are recording at 24-bit. Go to Preferences, um, go to Recording, and right there, um, it basically gives you the tick. Make sure that that's checked. Um, Wave is fine. AIFF is fine. CAF is more, I think, case of if you're recording for long periods of time, um, if the files are going to be, if single files are going to be in excess of two or four gig, depending if they're mono or stereo. So Wave is my typical um, go-to. Another common mistake is um, missing audio files. So, for example, I'll get a session. Um, and in the bin down here, there'll be uh, all these um, like orange ex exclamation marks basically saying that a file is missing that aren't in the folder that was sent. And usually that's the case because they could be working off different hard drives. Um, they could have uh, taken a loop that was from their desktop and the desktop didn't copy to the project's audio file. So a quick way to fix this, go to recording, project settings, go to your assets and make sure that you've clicked copy audio files in the project and also the sample rate as well. So just in case um, there's a different sample rate, someone recorded the wrong sample rate, you can bring it in and it's all in one place. So when you go to export, uh, it will include the audio files. The next thing is stereo recording uh, on a mono for a mono source. So, for example, I'm just going to um, hit record here on this, and I'm just going to hit record. And as you can, so it's just armed right now. And as you can see. Um, I've got, I'm using input 2 as my source at the moment. 
So if I were to, if I were to record this, this is just me doing quick test here, uh, and as you can see, it's only coming out on one side. So if I were to put that on another track, and let's say it was a stereo track, this is just me doing. It'll quick be test basically here. coming out like that, um, only on, on the one side. Uh, and as you can see, it's so. Um, of course, we could make this mono and split it back. This is just me doing. So that's that's also doable, but it's it's also using double the, the space. It's also you're using basically a stereo file to record um, a mono source. So I'd highly recommend uh, going here and making sure that you change the channel mode to mono. I'm using input two. And there's my new recording right there. All right, beautiful. The next common mistake is really exporting. So even though we may have checked um, our 24 bit recording, in there, that's totally fine. You can also just quickly check it in the bin there. So we'll go to that file. You can see down here it says 24 bit. Uh, and just say we want to export that file. So let's quickly export that. We'll just go put the cursor on that channel, export trackers audio file, and it'll basically give us um, some options here. And some times um, this is set to 16 bit for people and it's really unfortunate because you actually record it at a higher resolution and you're exporting at a lower resolution so make sure that's 24 bit um, bypass all your um, EQs compressors um, effects that kind of thing that you have on there if you're basically giving the files for someone else to mix uh, and label the file if you don't label the file it will just basically call it audio track and just hit export and then the file will be there. Let's quickly do that. There it is. And that's exported. That is the top five mistakes. So thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. And please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, there's plenty more of this coming. And have fun making music. Cheers.